Police officers have read it. What was your roast moment? Just checked onto my shift as I turned my patrol car on. My radio was in mid-broadcast about an accident just outside the city I work in. I voluntarily checked in route to help out the best I could. While heading there, I was informed that it was actually closer to the next city over, but that I would still be the first one there. I was then told it was a head-on collision. I arrived on scene about a minute later. It was in fact a head-on collision. Five people from one vehicle were not wearing seat belts. All five were fatally injured beyond any measure. There was nothing I could do. A doctor showed up on scene shortly after me. Nothing he could do. I watched two adults and three children die in front of my eyes. The six year old little girl just stared at me unblinking as she passed. I still get emotional. They were students at our elementary school. I knew them because I routinely go to that school just to see the little kids and give them junior police stickers. Take pictures with them and let them play with my gadgets and police car. I went to the memorial service that the school put on for the girls to pay my respects. Their father was there and didn't know who I was or that I was the first one there or what I saw. He was talking to another father, clearly in between denial and anger phases, about how he wished he knew what officer it was on scene so he could kill him for not doing anything and why didn't he do anything and blaming me for their deaths. That was really hard to hear. I wish I was a superhero and could have used magic powers to save those poor children. I'm sorry little ones. You deserve to live your lives. Kid drowned at a local pool, so I had to tag along with the ambulances for an investigation. I got there first and saw his father holding him crying and my heart sank. I ran over there and tried to perform CPR to the best of my ability for about 10 minutes before the ambulance arrived. He woke up right as it pulled onto our street. I proceeded to visit him in the hospital and now he swears he wants to be a police officer. Ex-cop from NSW Australian here. A guy once died in a motorcycle accident. We went to deliver the death message to his girlfriend. After reading the collision report the truck driver said he just pulled straight in front of him like a deliberate suicide. She was not answering, so we forced entry. The shelves of the fridge were on the kitchen floor. Opening the fridge we discovered multiple pillowcases with her cut up body inside. That was certainly an oshed moment. Got a call for a emotionally disturbed person. Arrive on scene and a 350 pound man built like an NFL lineman is passed out of on the floor face down. His wife says he suffers from PTSD from the first Iraq war and that he was an army ranger. He had been drinking heavily. His son is on scene and about 16 years old. The man begins to wake up and proceeds to smash his forehead into the ground. Repeatedly, we call for an ambulance. A small pool of blood begins to form on the floor. The wife grabs a rag and goes to wipe it up when this guy's head jerks up real quick. His face contorted in rage. He grabs the wife by the neck and throws her clear across the room onto the couch. We immediately jump on him, but he is preternaturally strong. There are four of us, and we are each fighting one limb. The kid jumps in and helps us get two sets of cuffs on him because one set was not wide enough to connect his wrists behind his back. I ride in the ambulance to the hospital with him, while he glares at me angrily reciting his military registration number, and telling me I won't get any information out of him, and that I'm a towel head I don't remotely look, like I'm from the region. The entire ride I hope, that he doesn't break out of the cuffs. If I'm being honest, I'm not sure we would've gained control of him, if the kid hadn't helped. Not me but my grandpa was on the California Highway Patrol for 20 years. He always told the story of how he pulled over this guy for a busted taillight. My grandpa asks him for his license and registration. And the guy says, how do you catch me so fast? Grandpa said the hair on the back of his neck never again stood up half so fast. Turned out the guy had robbed a bank not 5 minutes before. Imagine successfully escaping a bank robbery only to be pulled over for a broken taillight. My older brother is a cop. He got a call about a suicidal teenager behind a school with a knife. He rolled up to the spot, and when the kid noticed him, he immediately started hacking at his own neck with the knife. My brother sprints over to him and tases him. Saved the kid's life. 
It's all on body cam shit is ducking wild. I was a rookie cop in a small town. I was driving to a check on a report of a large group of kids causing a disturbance at a school parking lot late at night. I realized I had not tested my PA speaker, which I planned on using to disperse the crowd. On my way to the call, slowly rolling down a residential street at 2am with my windows down. I decide to tap my PA mic a couple times to check it. First two taps. Can't tell if it's working. I slow down. I tap the mic several more times. Definitely hear the loudspeakers that time. At that moment, I hear what the duck are you doing. I look out my passenger window and see this old dude sitting on his porch in his underwear, looking pissed. Our eyes locked. I realized I had no decent excuse for clicking my loudspeaker in a quiet neighborhood in the middle of the night. So I didn't say anything back to him, and I floored it up the road. I pulled up on a teen sleeping in a vehicle at the end of a country road. When I ran the license plate, I found out that he was reported as a runaway. The doors on the vehicle were locked, so I knocked on the window to wake him up. Once he woke up and realized what was going on, he shot himself in the mouth with a rifle he had hidden under his blanket. Rough way to start my shift. This happened August of last year, was about 1, 2 in the morning when a 9, 1, 1 hang up call came in where all that was heard, was screaming and swearing. I was the closest unit, riding alone as my partner had been violent old for another assignment, that set of days. So when I got out into the area, I was initially waiting for backup however as I was walking up to the house, I heard several voices screaming, rushing up to the house. The first thing I noticed was blood, everywhere, the floor, the walls, the door, all covered to shoulder height. A distraught woman screamed and pointed me towards the living room. Once I get into the living room, I see a male and female on a couch, both covered in blood. The male had a massive laceration on his right forearm, and the female had taken a belt and snake wrapped it around his arm, to try and stop the bleeding. Seeing how the belt was applied, I knew it wasn't doing anything to stop the blood flow. So I pulled out my tourniquet, and as I prepped it said to the guy this is gonna hurt like heck, but it'll stop the bleeding. I applied the tourniquet just above the top of his bicep, and knew it was on properly when he told me his hand had started to go numb. It was at that point I noticed a second deep gash on his tricep that went down to the bone. It took M's about 15 minutes to get to the house, and the paramedic made it abundantly clear that had I not applied the tourniquet, the male would have bled out long before they were able to get there. In the end, turns out the guy had come home drunk and forgot his keys, climbed up to a second story window and punched his way into the house with near deadly results. Not a cop here. This is more a story of how I unintentionally gave a cop an oshed moment. I had a night job managing a liquor store in a very bad neighborhood. It was a one room affair with me behind a desk with a cash register just inside the store's entrance. I'd only had the job for about a month when a friend dropped by to shoot the shit. After a bit, he asked me if the store owners had provided me with any kind of protection given what a nasty neighborhood it was. I told him. Just this old double barreled shotgun that's kept under the counter here but it's empty. With that I reached down and picked up the shotgun to show him. Unbeknownst to me, two armed robberies had just gone down on a fast foot restaurant and another business closed by within a couple of blocks and the police were responding to the calls in full force. I heard the sirens, but didn't think much of it because sirens were pretty common in that part of town. A police car swerved into the parking lot in front of the store and the officer jumped out of his car and dashed in to check if the robbers weren't hitting my store too. The cop burst through the front door of the store seconds after I'd picked up the shotgun to show my friend. Him coming through the door as fast as he did startled me and without thinking, I turned toward him with the shotgun in my hands and it was inadvertently pointed at him. His gun was holstered and I had the drop on him. At that moment he didn't know if I was the perp who'd just robbed the other stores, or what. His face went paper white. Both of our minds were blown at the exact same time. I quickly laid the gun down and let him know there was no harm intended. But, I'm pretty sure, he's never forgotten that particular roast moment and neither, have I. 
consider subscribing if you enjoyed this video, and if you want to see more of Reddit Universe.